What? Behind you! Look! Oh my god! Okay, I usually hate exaggerated titles and I always feel like blaming one single individual is a cop-out since most of the time when a company starts receiving criticism and going under, uh, there's multiple reasons why that is happening. But dang, this guy is not helping his case whatsoever. You see y'all, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with this CEO dude and Unity itself. I think most of us are aware of what's going on with Unity, but essentially they come up with this amazing idea of charging developers a Unity runtime fee on all games built with Unity, provided they have passed both a minimum revenue threshold within the last year and a minimum lifetime install count. This article by Mashable goes on to explain that currently the runtime fee thresholds start at $200,000 in revenue and 200,000 lifetime game installs, depending on which version of Unity is used. Fees are calculated according to the number of installs above the threshold, with developers charge up to 20 cents per install. Now listen, 20 cents doesn't sound like a whole lot initially per install, but let's picture it this way. If the game gets an additional 100,000 more installs past the 200,000 lifetime game installs or $200,000 as well, that's already $20,000 developers have to fork over to Unity. Now that's a lot of damage! I'm not gonna go too in depth about the pricing per se, but I wanted y'all to get a gist and feel for why this can be very problematic, especially for indie game developers like Inner Sloth who made Among Us, as well as Massive Monster who made Cult of the Lamb. If you want a bit more detailed video on the fees aspect of Unity and what that will cost in regards to Unity Personal, Plus, Pro, and Enterprise, I highly recommend watching the video made by Game From Scratch, which I will link in the description down below. So I know, I know, I'm supposed to be talking about the CEO dude, but I wanna give y'all a little bit of background and explain why this is kind of problematic in the first place. Well, let's think about it for a bit, especially the installation fee aspect of this. Had it been simply a revenue-based fee, yeah, I'm sure developers would still not feel too keen or happy about it, but an install-based fee is so much worse. Put in this perspective, Cult of the Lamb had over 1 million users playing its game in the first week of sale, which is absolutely substantial for an indie game developer team. With this being Massive Monster's biggest success with them only making two other games, which I will say the Adventure Pals also did pretty well with sales, but this was made with hacks, so it wouldn't really be affected. We know that every sale is crucial to these developers since they're taking a lot of risk with making games that become very costly and time consuming fast. If this threshold took effect by this time, Massive Monster could have needed to pay a whopping $160,000 for the other 800,000 installs past the initial 200,000 installs. That's not exactly chump change for an indie developer and even something like Marvel Snap, even with how gargantuan the Marvel IP is, yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't exactly want to be losing out on money either with this new deal. Even past that, how in the world are they going to exactly combat software piracy if they're trying to implement this? Their answer? I'm working on it. Yeah, solid answer there, y'all. So theoretically, you can install Bomb, as it's called, a game you hate by potentially pirating the game and downloading it over and over again if Unity doesn't have a solid plan to combat piracy. Finally, I'm actually getting to the point of this vid and talking about this <clears throat> not so lovely individual here. You may be asking, but Mr. Red9777, why on earth would Unity ever make this rash decision if they knew it would potentially anger people? Money! Do I even need to spell it out at this point? Unity's market is doing, well, abysmal, plain and simple, compared to the last few years of operation. Money talks y'all, and so do shareholders. You'll have to remember, shareholders, which are people who actually own part of that company, care only about financial returns and overall profit of the company. 
public image and ethics is not something they necessarily care about if profit isn't going to be negatively affected in the long run. At this point, Unity is more than likely just looking to break even their losses from over the years rather than gain a profit, I feel like. As customers and even developers that use Unity, we are stakeholders in the company and while we are quote unquote <clears throat> important to the company, we got to remember that shareholders ultimately have the final say and they're basically the ones who are going to make these decisions along with the personal interests of the CEO. Yeah, this guy right here. In case you didn't know, my dude here was also the CEO of EA. Hmm, very interesting. Are we talking about the same EA that has gained a huge reputation for being money hungry and greedy with its microtransactions? You know, it's funny because reading up on this dude, I just can't really garner a net positive experience from him from almost any article I read about him. I like how the article that Shaq News wrote about him sorta jabs at his leadership by saying, during his second stint with Electronic Arts, this dude's last name, I don't know how to fully say it, uh, presided over the company and oversaw its major releases. In 2013, he resigned from EA after continued poor financial performance at the company. What a great legacy to leave behind. Be known as a CEO who left your company after a poor financial performance. Talk about jumping a sinking ship and leaving your crew behind. <clears throat> Luffy can never. Yeah, not to mention, um, kind of suspicious, Mr. CEO, that after the announcement, you sold 2,000 Unity shares on September 6th, a week prior to the September 12th announcement. Jumping ship again, are we? Well, maybe not necessarily, but to me, that really wouldn't strike me as being confident in your own company. Sure, someone could be selling shares for the sake of just getting money for one reason or another, or to put their money somewhere else to diversify their investment portfolio, but to say this is fishy is an understatement. Oh yeah, and not to mention that this dude basically roasted the heck out of anyone who disagreed with him regarding microtransactions when he stated that while those who avoid implementing monetization early on in the creative process are some of the most beautiful and pure brilliant people, they are also some of the biggest idiots. Yeah, he apparently redacted that statement, but uh, actions speak louder than words here, buddy. And your actions for giving two titans of the gaming industry bad reputations doesn't exactly foster a healthy relationship between you and gamers. I want to talk about this in another video, but this is why developers are deathly afraid of something like Baldur's Gate 3 succeeding, because this shows other developers that gamers are, quite frankly, tired of meaningless and overpriced microtransactions, especially in games where you already had to spend money to get. Yeah, seems like the CEO's legacy left a mark with the controversy that happened with Star Wars Battlefront. So this dude is known to be very money oriented in both EA and Unity and has caused people to uproar against his practices. He believes anyone not trying to squeeze every penny out of someone is an idiot. He left his former company in financial despair while also potentially getting ready to do the same thing with Unity as he sold his shares and is a heavy defender of microtransactions that we oh so love. Surely this must be everything this guy has to... Oh, that's bad. That, that, that's really bad. Yeah, I honestly was not expecting this at all. In June 2019, this guy was facing a whole lawsuit by the former VP of HR, Ann Evans. According to TechCrunch, the VP stated that he, well, I think you can read that for yourself, but that's probably going to get me in trouble with YouTube if I said that all out loud. After she came out about this, she was even fired. Evan stated that he also said and did these types of actions as well. Now, I don't necessarily want to comment on the legality of the situation, and regardless of the outcome, this isn't exactly something you want to potentially be known for regardless. 
it just really doesn't look good that right after this she was also let go. It portrays the message that you can't go against the man or you'll be punished severely for it. And even at that, it doesn't exactly make your company look promising to future investors either, as this one potential investor stated on Reddit. Just really not a good look for this dude considering everything we already know about him. When profits and return on investments trump the well-being over your own consumers and end users, I think that says a lot about the character of an individual here and the hold that monetary gains have on them. I get it, companies need to make a profit, sure, but when you start getting too greedy, I think it's a similar concept to selling your soul to the devil in my opinion. Initially, it sounds like a good idea to gain all these riches you desire, but is losing your soul in humanity in the process really worth it? <laughs> I think that's for another discussion for another time. I guess you could say unity really did bring unity to people, just not the way they probably wanted. Having so many game developers mad at you is not exactly promising and only spells disaster for future endeavors as people will choose to find other game engines to utilize. Not to mention having this guy as your figurehead right now. Yeah, that also doesn't spell great things for the future success of Unity. Only time will tell to see how this ends, but ultimately, if this goes through, Unity is not going to be in a good position. Even if this does get resolved somehow in the end, the CEO is not someone I would exactly trust with my company. I don't know, what do you guys think about all this, and what do y'all think Unity should do to make amends for this situation? Personally, maybe just taking the, oh, it's just a prank, bro, route might be the best option here. In any case, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and I will see all of y'all in the next video or stream. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and peace out.